On the outskirts of Beirut stands a rather haunting reminder of American policy in Lebanon. It's 14 months since the US Marine base was bombed. 11 months since the last Marines were evacuated in such a hurry. Yet the way that Syria, Russia's major ally in the Middle East, has moved in to fill the vacuum makes the writing on the wall look like a prophecy coming true. There is no way to avoid the Syrian role, domination as you call, for in Lebanon. We have to accept it, we have to deal with it, it's, uh, it's a must. Syrian domination means not just its army controlling a large part of Lebanon, but that the government of Syrian President Assad is able to impose its political will on the country at large. Unlike the Israelis in southern Lebanon, there's little or no opposition to the Syrians here in the north. And that gives them free reign to make the Lebanese as bitterly opposed to the West and to Israel as they are. Throughout Syrian-controlled Lebanon, the message is made very clear. The enemy is first Israel, and then America. There's no shortage of new young recruits to the cause. Here in the ancient city of Baalbek, hundreds of youngsters have been called up into militias, financed and equipped by the Syrians. At this stage, Russian involvement is limited to the help the Russians give Syria. But in the minds of a growing number of Lebanese, primarily Muslims, a shift towards the Eastern Bloc is inevitable. We have nothing to lose. We have to rely on somebody. We do rely on the Soviets. Why not? It's a sign of the times that Mr. Jumblat Struz's militia has recently received new tanks from Russia via Syria. And that senior officers in his army are now trained in Moscow. It's not that the Soviet Union wants to get directly involved in Lebanon. It's too much of a minefield, as the Americans discovered. Rather that Lebanon, such an important piece in the political chessboard of the Middle East, is no longer in the Western camp. David Smith, News at 10, Lebanon.